Good morning and welcome to our Wednesday morning service. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you and, and also, also with you. you. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let's recognise his presence with us. As God's people we have gathered, let, let us, us worship, worship him, him together. together. God in Christ has revealed his glory. Come, Come let, let us, us worship. worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the, the Lord's, Lord's name, name is greatly to be praised. praised. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord. Oh, oh praise, praise the, the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 23. We're going to say it together. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is in actually in two parts. The first part is from Philippians 4, 11b to 13. For I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And the second part comes from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be able to share this act of worship with you. Our first hymn was the beautiful We Rest on Thee. The words were written by Edith Cherry. She was born in Plymouth in 1872. At 16 months old, she contracted polio and had to use crutches for the rest of her life. When she was six, her much-loved younger sister died. And then, at 12, she suffered a stroke which seemed to unlock a spring of creativity and she started to write poetry and hymns and she wrote this one when she was 23. Two years later she had another stroke. She told her mother, I think I am going mother and I am so glad. I've been hungry to go for some while. A few hours later, speaking of the past, she said, it all seems so small, all I have tried to do, so small to him. Her mother replied, But there are your songs, dear, they will carry on your work. Edith said, Ah, oh, but they were not mine at all. They were just given to me already, and all I had to do was to write them down. Her last words were, I'm all right, Mama. I'm trusting in God, 
and he will undertake for me. She was 25 years old. The last hymn we'll sing is It Is Well With My Soul, and it's one we don't often sing now. In 1870, just as Edith Cherry was about to be born, the author Horatio Spafford was a successful Chicago lawyer with every reason to be thankful and faithful to God. But 12 months later, his four-year-old son died, and while struggling with this personal tragedy, the great Chicago fire of the same year reduced the family's wealth to ashes. To give them space and time to recover, Horatio made plans for his wife and four daughters to join the evangelists Moody and Sankey on one of their European preaching tours. Due to board the ship the SSV du Havre, a business emergency forced him to remain in Chicago while the family went on ahead. But in mid-Atlantic, the Ville du Havre collided with another ship and sank in just 12 minutes, losing most of the passengers and crew. Several days later, Horatio Spafford received a telegram from his wife Anna, saved, alone. All four of their daughters were lost. He immediately set off to bring his wife home, and on this crossing the ship's captain summoned him to the bridge as they passed the place where the Ville du Havre was wrecked. He returned to his cabin and wrote the words which became the hymn It Is Well With My Soul. He recorded that We passed over the spot where she went down in mid-ocean, the waters three miles deep. But I do not think of our dear ones there. They are safe, folded, the dear lambs. Horatio and Anna returned to Chicago, where they had three more children, sadly one of whom died of scarlet fever, and then they went on to move to Israel, settling in the old part of Jerusalem, serving the needy, the poor, the sick and the homeless. Their work became known as the American Colony. How could Horatio write those words, It is well with my soul, after all that had happened to him? Why was he not ranting and raging at God for the unfairness of it all? How could he go on to serve a God who would seem to have taken everything from him? Last week, wanting to look up the words of a psalm, I grabbed a Bible that had been my mother's. In the margin, in her handwriting, were these words from Psalm 16, verse 5. You, Lord, are all I have, and you give me all I need. Age 66, she had fallen and broken her hip and wrist, and then very soon after, weeks after, my father was rushed into hospital, where he died after six weeks. All through her Bible are written quotes and verses that clearly gave her strength and a closeness to God while she was going through the hell of pain and grief. And I have heard from many that the more awful their circumstances, the closer God feels. Our heads may be full of whirling emotions of fear and loss or hurt, but our souls, the centre of us, are still drawing our strength from him, leaning on him for support and comfort, knowing that he's there, in it, with us. We rest on thee. It is well with my soul. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as we walk through this life following you, we're inspired by the heroes of the past with their stories of incredible courage and dedication. 
Thank you that we, as it were, stand on the shoulders of these giants when we hear of their lives. In our isolation, help us to think and pray for others across the world who've been much more severely challenged by COVID-19 than us. We pray particularly for Daniel and Amelia and their work in Rusa amongst disadvantaged people. We know that in the UK, care homes have been hit so badly by this virus. But how much more will Daniel and Amelia's work be affected in Bulgaria? Please look after them, encourage them and keep them safe along with all those they look after. We know that throughout the world about 10% of Christians suffer violent mockery, torture, beatings and discrimination simply for believing in you. Unbelievably, in some countries, Christians have been blamed for coronavirus. So their persecution has actually increased. May this be a time when those brothers and sisters who suffer shine even more brightly for you. And may their persecutors see that shining light and turn to follow you. In this country too, may the church rise and be seen to be outstanding in its care, not just for churchgoers, but for whole communities. May your life, Lord Jesus, be obvious in believers' lives. So we thank you for the heroes that Sue mentioned and so many thousands of others down the ages. May we, like them and St Paul, learn to be content in our current circumstances and find our rest in you. Amen. Now we come to our time of confession. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our pride. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ came with good news for all people. Forgive our silence. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our self-centeredness. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's close by saying the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen.